in seven, eight months, you may be able to become a totally different player if you follow stuff like this and get serious in the weight room the level. This is why. All right, guys, I thought we'd get back to some hitting videos like we were talking about previously. We've talked about bat speed. We've talked about swing plane. The next thing we really need to talk about, maybe the most important of all three, is your barrel accuracy and your barrel control. How often are you able to put the ball on the barrel in a game, in an at-bat? Are you able to manipulate the barrel to get a job done, move the runner from second, get the runner in from home, stuff like that? That's what shows you're a true hitter. And so we're going to talk about some, you know, a drill, a system where you can identify holes in your swings or in your swing or uh, regions of the strike zone where you're not really that effective at putting in the play um, on the barrel and backspinning and driving. We'll talk about all that stuff. Guys, it's really important that in your training when hitting is identifying your weak spots in the zone, your weak spots with your own swing and diving in to the parts where you struggle. It's, it's really easy to get lollipop BP right down the middle and feel good about your swing and it, you know, make yourself think you're better than you are. Everybody can hit this right here. Everybody can hit that right there. We're not going to talk about down the middle because if you can't hit this effectively in BP right back up the middle for line drives, we got other things we need to worry about. So this drill we're going to talk about or system we're going to talk about is going to provoke some struggle out of you. It's going to help you quickly identify areas of your swing that need to improve. So first off, where we're going to start is that down and away strike. You know, this is that pitch that's really tough with two strikes. You almost never pull the trigger on this before two strikes. It's just something that no one's really looking for. So it's an area of the zone that a lot of people struggle with. The goal in this zone, and whoever's throwing you BP or you're doing it with a machine or anything like that, Aim it towards that bottom down and away strike so you can practice this. We're trying to do line drives, right? Backspin line drives into left field, left center gap, opposite field gap if you're a right-handed hitter. Uh, I was a left-handed hitter, so it's always easier for me to kind of do these things from a lefty's perspective. Obviously, just do the reverse if you're a righty. Um, we're trying to get backspin. Now, guys, there's, there's an error here in your swing if you're getting this kind of action. You're getting this kind of slicing away, hard fade towards the uh, third base line if you're a left-handed hitter. That means something's going wrong with your direction and your swing. Meaning, you're not staying through the baseball. You're just deflecting it on your way over here. Most of your swings are going to go like this. They're going to obviously, if you're over here, your swing is going to come. You want to get it through all the way through the zone, right? We want this swing going, staying through the middle of the field staying through the pitcher as long as we can. Obviously, on certain pitches away and in, it's going to be a little more difficult. But what we don't want, especially with this outside pitch, we don't want this action. We don't want that. Meaning, so basically, I'm not swinging to the pitch. I'm just deflecting on my way to here. So your swing direction is a little bit too much to the pull side. It's going to cause that deflection and that slice so you're not going to be able to drive it to left center. You're not going to be able to burn an outfielder. And everything's going to have that slice and fade in the way, meaning you're getting that side spin, not good. So our goal is trying to eliminate that error by not over-rotating. Usually that means with your swing direction, you're over-rotating a little bit on the outside pitch. Again, watch big league hitters, guys. Wherever they hit the ball, typically, that's exactly where their torso is facing. So if they get that inside corner pitch and they pull down the right field line, they're like this. And they get that big finish behind. Even there's a wall here, I can't do it. But I mean, they're turning to create space for their hands to move through. Now, on an opposite field, away pitch, not going to rotate as much. You're going to end like this. I mean, your torso is facing where you're hitting the ball, if that makes sense. So if you're having trouble with that air on the opposite field side, you're probably over rotating. Try to work on that. Now, this up and away pitch is the next zone. Same thing. Because it's up in the zone, we're trying to drive this in the gap. I mean, this is for damage. Same thing, though. We want that backspin. We want that ball staying true. No slicing. What this is also training, guys, is think about where your hands are in the start of the, at the start of your swing in the zone. This is training two different bat planes. 
So we're training, we're training a flat path at the top of the zone. We're training a more vertical path at the bottom of the zone. So not only is this going to help you clean up some of the maybe directional issues, other issues in your swing, but it's also making your path more adjustable, meaning you can handle the top pitch, you can handle the pitch bottom away. Um, but the same rule applies. We're trying to get clean ball flight, backspin, balls carrying. Next zone, obviously up here, up and in. This was kind of the zone I always struggled with. Uh, and it was because of the opposite of what the struggle is on the out, outside part. I was always good at this because I under rotated. I was always an under rotated guy. So I had no problem driving it to opposite field. But the, the pull side, I under rotated. So I didn't create enough space for my hands to get through the baseball. So they ended up coming around it, cutting off. And I get that top spin. So we're trying to drive this again, right center gap over the right fielder's head. If you're getting bad ball flight, this is what it's going to look like. I mean, it's going to get that top spin. You might hit it. You might crush it on the barrel. You might crush it, but you're getting that heavy top spin and you're just not getting any carry on the baseball. Again, if you're getting, if you're getting just a little bit, a little bit of, of uh, top spin or a little bit of break on it, the opposite field side or the pull side, you don't want to worry about that too much. Obviously, we want to get true backspun ball flight. But if we're not getting massive top spin or massive slice, that's fine. So same thing. We're trying to focus, again, if you're getting this top spin, you need to focus on really rotating that lower half, letting the lower half lead the hands like this, create space for your hands to just stay through the baseball. Okay, that's the big thing. Got to create the space for your hands to be able to work through the baseball, especially on the inside corner or the inner third. Not a lot of space for your hands to get inside that baseball. Middle away, you got plenty of space to do that. It's, frankly, it's pretty easy. Inside pitch really is really determined by how your lower half creates space. So think about that. If you're getting that error, that's what's going to be effective for you. Now, bottom and in. Down and in strike. This is the left-handed hitter's honey hole. Same thing applies, though. We're trying to hit this right center gap with backspin. Again, we're training these, this vertical plane. You know, we're going to have a little bit more vertical plane here. And it's going to be a tight horizontal plane on the up and in. So same thing applies. We don't want to be getting that top spin. Um, we want to be getting that clean backspin. Again, or even just square it up. A lot of times you square it up, it's going to knuckle. But we, wish wanted, we don't want to see it going any direction. We want to see it just staying true and staying hit. Now, you may struggle with the top two zones. That's probably because you got more vertical bat angle than most guys. So you can really get underneath those pitches at the bottom of the zone, but you struggle with this. So heavily focus on the top of the zone. And you really, I mean, you have to learn how to adjust that path and stay really directly to the ball at the top of the zone, and you're going to have that flatter path. If you're struggling with the bottom two, that means you probably have a flatter path. So you really need to focus on getting down and underneath those pitches at the bottom of the zone. And the way you do that on the outside and the inside is pretty much the same. I mean, you're trying to, you got to get down to that plane. You know, think about it. This pitch is coming at this plane right here. It's coming down. I mean, our swing has to get down underneath and then through it. We can't go like this and meet it like that because then we're, we're meeting it on, a, on an X. There's almost no intersection point. That's why you're going to, a lot of times people with steep swings or flat paths, the ball at the bottom of the zone, they either hit it straight in the ground or they hit it, you know, clip it and pop it straight up in the air. It's very hard for guys to, with a flat path, to get that bottom of the zone fastball or bottom of the zone breaking ball and drive it effectively because they have that steeper path. So it's the same thing with guys, you know, the, if there's a pitch right here, that's flat at the top of the zone and you have a, a swing that goes down, you get more vertical bat, it's going to be tough for you to catch up to that top of the zone. That's why you, you have to develop the adjustability in your path. Because if you're a one path hitter, you're, it's going to be really easy for, for pitchers at the college level, professional level to find those holes in your swing. So think about this, guys. Again, find the zone that you struggled the most with and dive into that. Try to do as much as you can to improve it. you got to be your own coach at the end of the day hitting coaches can help you with this but try out different techniques try a different swing thought to help you handle whichever zone you're struggling with if it's at the top of the zone hey think of getting on top if you're struggling with the bottom of the zone i mean think it's like a golf swing almost think about really getting down underneath it because if you have a steep swing 
I promise you, if you think about getting down underneath it, you're not going to swing like this, but it is going to make a little bit of an adjustment that might help you. Um, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think about this, any questions you might have. And again, if, if you are interested in working with Elite Sports Advising, this is stuff we talk about with our clients all the time. Let Go to our website. You'll see it right here, www.elitesportsadvising.com. Fill out an eval request on our front page. We'll meet with you, talk about where you're at in the process, what schools may be a fit for you going into this next summer, and how we can help you get there. Also, in seven, eight months, you may be able to become a totally different player if you follow stuff like this and get serious in the weight room. We'll help you with that as well. I appreciate all the support you guys have uh, given us on these videos, and stay tuned for the next one.